Hello guys and welcome back to another live at 945. If you haven't tuned into this show before, my name's Adam Van Ord and I am your host here at Live at 945. And I'll be walking you through another great interview, this one with Jeremy Griffith of Big Squid RC. He is the guy that writes the column um, of everybody's scaling and so we'll talk about how he landed that position. Um, a little bit about what he does there and what he's got going on as well as a bunch of other stuff. Uh, real quick, I'm going to respond to a comment of Messenger, and yes, Dion, it is Messenger. Um, I posted this Facebook question on my personal Facebook page earlier, and it was one that I had gotten stumped with, so then you had to put like an embarrassing picture of yourself up, and um, that has been my news feed, like my job all night like to respond to all of those messages it was way 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 more work than I would have ever thought it had would have been um, and it's been funny though because everybody has been very confident that they were correct just like I was and still didn't happen um, but that's okay and it's fine and it was all in good fun so all right let's get back to live at 945 and talk a little bit about live at 945 so if this is your first Live at 945 that you are catching, Live at 945 is a live question answer um, feed show that goes on here on Facebook Live. I bring on a guest, we'll be side by side, actually he'll be over here, um, and during that process we'll have a conversation um, about all kinds of different RC related things and, um, and then we'll kind of close the show out and move on from there. Uh, but tonight we have Jeremy Griffith, he's a cool dude, um, I can't wait to talk to him, I got a chance to run a test feed with him last night and uh, I had a blast talking to him, I'm sure you guys are going to love everything about what's going on there. Uh, guys who are in here right now, if you don't mind, I would ask respectfully that you share this feed out there, we don't have a bunch of numbers at the moment and that's probably because we took last week off for Thanksgiving and then we had a show before that and then the week before that we had another break. So. We've only been like in every other week for a little while, and um, so we've probably dropped a little bit in the people who are following right away. Uh, but don't fret, I'm trying to hit every week from here on out, and seeing how well I can do that, um, but it keeps getting harder every single time because your circle of people that you know is only so big, so I, rel I rely a lot on you guys to give me some pointers, point me in directions of people. Um, or if you're someone who wants to be on to shoot me a message and we'll see what we can't do all right now that all of that's taken care of real quick before I fire this up bring um, Jeremy on screen the initial things that I like to talk about at the beginning of the feed I've got to promote myself just a little bit here so check out my YouTube channel at Van Ord Customs check out my Instagram Van Ord underscore customs check out my Facebook page at Van Ord Customs and lastly Check out my website at vanroadcustoms.com. I sell some little scale license plates, road signs, uh, and scale backdrops. Um, if you are new to this, or if you're over watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. If you guys aren't following me on YouTube, please begin doing so. I've been working at um, putting up some content and trying to deliver a little more regularly on the content over there and see what's going on. I appreciate the people sharing. I really do. Thank you very much. It should spike this up and be a little more fun for you. Last thing to touch on before I bring Jeremy on is this is um, a place that is supposed to be fairly family friendly so if you would please keep your comments in the such in the PG range I would genuinely appreciate it. Um, this it's it's just meant to be a great place for anybody who wants to learn about what's going on in our hobby and I appreciate all the support from all of you and without further ado I'm gonna bring Jeremy up in here and we'll get this interview fired up all right uh oh it's not letting me bring him on so Jeremy if you're watching um, for some reason it won't let me bring you on I am not sure why. That, of course, would have to happen. We didn't have any issues really last night after we got things running. Um, I'm guessing you're watching from your phone that you used last night. Uh, additionally, um, make sure that you're a member of this group in general. And if you're not, then I will probably have to approve you or one of my uh, 
amazing um, moderators can improve you while that's going on. In fact, Jason, I saw you're in here. If you could check to make sure that Jeremy's a member of our group, that would be amazing. Um, let's see if we can't get him in here. Because right now, it won't let me bring him on the screen, and I don't know why. You are a member. I thought you were a member. You've been on before. Um, Jeremy, try uh, closing out of the feed and coming back, and we'll see if we can't get you in that way. Maybe I have to share it with you? I don't know. Give me a sec, guys. I apologize. As always, we have lots of fun times with Facebook Live. Okay, so I sent him a message. That's an invite. We'll see what's going on. Um, Dion, as you say, request to join it. Sometimes, for some reason, that. Oh, there we go. We're good to go. For some reason, it wasn't showing that I could even bring him on the screen. Uh, but now I can, and he's on his way in, and we'll be getting this thing fired up. I hope. <laughs> so. All right. All right. Are we good? I think we are, I think we are good. No echo. I do have. I do echo, have the echo though, though for, whatever. for whatever reason. You want me to try to mess with my uh, Wi-Fi thing real quick? Yeah. Try yeah. To try that. to do that. That'd, That'd be awesome. awesome. So, so what happens what happened is, is for the time, for the time being, general... while he's logging out into messing with his Wi-Fi, uh, we found for for some reason, and I don't know why that if you're not on Wi-Fi and you're operating with the cell phone signal from your phone, that we end up with a, uh, with a reverb when I'm talking, it comes back to me. Or vice versa if I'm on and the other way. All right. All right, so, how about now? I don't hear it coming back now, so it's working. There we go. We, we oh, you got about Facebook Live. Right? <laughs> All right. <coughs> okay, man, so how's it going today? Not bad. Uh, I, was, I was a little more sick this morning than I uh, wanted to be, but uh, had a pretty good dose of uh, Dayquil. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we will uh, we'll take it easy on you for the sickness there, and we'll see nah. what we can do. From there. We'll All right. Fine. Okay. So let's start with this. Um, for people who don't know you, uh, let's um, kind of fill us in a little bit about yourself. And what's going on there? All right. Well, you know, my, my name's Jeremy Griffith. Uh, I'm 33. Still play with toys. Um, I've been in the hobby for, I want to say seven years, roughly. I uh, didn't get into crawling, though, until uh, maybe about three, three and a half years ago. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, just, you know. Love RC, and then I, I got the the dream job, you know, of, of uh, you know working with Big Squid, and uh, it's 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 been pretty crazy since since I started doing it. Awesome, man. So, uh, you said you've been in a lot in the hobby about seven years. What or who got you started in this hobby? Um, I, I'd have to say my buddy Matt. He uh, he he bought a T Max like like everyone does their first go around. Um, and I seen that and I was like, oh, wow, I, I really want one. And, uh, found one on like Craigslist for like 150 bucks. And I think I had like two, 200 bucks to my name for like two weeks. I was like, I can live off 50 bucks. And I uh, went out and bought it, messed around a little bit, got to be too much, you know, with, with nitro, at least for me, I mean, you're constantly messing with it. Yeah. Uh, I was, I was definitely on a budget, um, and then it kind of went away for about maybe maybe a year. And then I, I picked up the uh, the first gen ruckus a day before I moved out to California to to to, to move in with my my girlfriend who's now my wife. Mm -hmm. And uh, I bought that the day before, and I was so scared that I was getting on the plane that they weren't going to let me take it, you know. But uh, I I got that, and when I was out there, I just I had a blast out there with it, and it just kind of started snowballing yeah that's awesome so you talk a little bit about your first hobby grade was like the the t-max with the nitro experience 
Um, I, I did the nitro experience for a little while too. Uh, for me, that's a lot more work than electric. Um, if you weren't in our RC hobby, what do you think your hobby of choice would be? <coughs> um, I, I'd say toy collecting. You know, I, I did a lot of toy collecting, like collecting old vintage toys from like the 80s. You know, I, I, it makes me sound old, you know, saying that. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, I loved it, you know, and then I started, you know, when I, when I did do that, I was building the, uh, the, the, the dioramas for the action figures. And okay. uh, I had a blast doing that. And I kind of, I sort of inco incorporate that now with, with like the scale side of RC. So yeah, it'd be toy collecting for sure. Yeah, I mean, I see a scale garage kicking around over your shoulder over there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that's like kind of that. like the diorama <laughs> feel, which I think is a lot of what the the more scale related guys kind of get into is that um, how real can it look kind of feel. So right. Um, so let's go along those lines. There's, there's questions I generally la ask everybody that's on the show. And the first one is, do you like big tires in the scale scene or small tires and why? I like the small tires. I do. Uh, one five, five and, and, and 1.9 is that's, that's really my max. Just, uh, you have to work at it a little harder and it, it also looks better. It looks more scale to me. Um, but obviously, if you're running like a bomber or something like that, then two twos, you know, kind of kind of work. But on, on a regular scale rig, one one five fives or, or one point nines are the best. They they yep. look the best too. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. At least I think they do. You I, know, you know, I, you know I, somebody can be like, no, he's wrong. I really like so on a competition style truck, on a truck that I'm gonna go run and try harder lines on. I like a tall one, like a tall 1.9 tire. So a 4.75 um, size tire. Uh, but if I'm building something that's supposed to like take really good pictures and look realistic, I, I need to go smaller than that or else the size is off. So. Right. It's not proportionate, of, you know? Yeah. Like kind I, of a matter like, of what you like. Yeah. I like, I like to make my rigs look like, the ones you'd see on the street, you know, not not massive, you know, monster truck tires. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you see that on the street too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they don't get too far without getting pulled over, though. Depending yeah. where you live, if you live like in Texas, you're okay. They don't care. <laughs> All right. So, are you a brushed or a brushless fanatic, and why? I'd say brushed. Um, I mean, even when I did a little bit of racing. Um, I, I, I was running a brushed 12 turn. I mean, granted, I was running in like the rookie class, but, uh, I, I still did pretty good. Um, and then for crawlers, definitely brushed. Uh, it just, they sound better. It, it, they just feel better. Um, but bashing, yeah, give me brushless all day long. <laughs> we gotta have that power when you're bashing on something. Right, right. I, I had a brushless system in one of my crawlers and it was... It was too hard not to keep trying to just send it, <laughs> you know, so uh, I like to get, you know, low and slow. All right. All right. Uh, so I'm going to pose kind of a comment to all of those people out there in viewer land right here, because it's, it's real quiet tonight. The comments aren't like clicking off like they usually do sometimes. So guys who are out there watching, if this is your first time, if it's your like your millionth time watching the show, whatever, um, comment up how you kind of came about ending up here uh did you find it through me did you find it through jeremy did you how, how did you find live at 9 45 i'd be curious to answer some of those figure some of those out uh as the thing goes on here so let's kind of jump into what you've got going on jeremy where you are writing for big squid um what what specifically do you do for them I, uh, <clears throat> I, I write the everybody's scaling column comes out every Friday, sometimes Saturday. Um, uh, I do that on a weekly basis. And then I also, I'll do reviews, um, post up, uh, little product spotlights and stuff like that every now and then. 
All right. Um, how did you end up uh, landing a position writing with Big Squid? So, uh, like, do I get to just apply today and um, I'm in, or like, sure. how, how did you how did you end up doing all of that? <clears throat> well, I, you know, I always say I got lucky. You know, my 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 previous job I had it it took up a lot of time. Like I was, I was never out, always working. Uh, started the new gig I'm at now. Um, gives me a little more, more free time. And uh, there was a cave crawl that the St. Louis uh, Scale Freaks put on. And uh, me and a couple guys from my club here in uh, around Chicago, Shy Town Crawlers, we got together and, and we, we headed down there. And uh, Bill Stevens, they call him the wrench. Uh, I think he was watching. <clears throat> He was uh, he was down there, and, uh, and Brian was down there, the, one of the main guys from Big Squid. Mm -hmm. and they asked me if uh, you know if I was looking for a job. And I was like, well, yeah, sure, you know. <laughs> and then uh, they were telling me about it, you know, saying you know it, it is a lot of work, you know, it's just not all, you know. Here's a toy, you know. Um, so that that's kind of how I got into it. Uh, they, you know, seen my pictures, seen the, the off-road park pictures and stuff like that. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, it was, you know, a couple, they were like, there was like a month where nothing really happened and I just kept pestering him, you know, <laughs> finally he was like, all right, you know, give him a shot. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So if, if I didn't go down there to, uh, St. Louis, I, I don't know if I would have, uh, you know, I don't know if I'd be here right now. Yeah. You know? Um, so that's one of the things that I found most interesting in, in the crawling segment of the hobby is that uh, a lot of the connections that you end up with, um, although there's like this vast internet community and people ca contact each other all the time and so on and so forth, but uh, a lot of times the, the connections that end up moving people like team driver directions or whatever they come from like in-person meetups where people are out running their trucks and and get along and um kind of learn who one another are in that manner and so i think i think that's cool because it, it puts a little more depth to what's going on than just um some of the other ways that would happen definitely definitely you know uh it, it's this is it's pretty neat you know like you know getting into the crawler club, you know, cause yeah, if, if it wasn't for the shy down crawlers, I, I would have never went down there, you right. know? Um, and, uh, yeah, just look at the draw, you know, one, you know, Bill is part of the club. So, you know, we, we have him and then Brian don't live too far away from me. So I'm, I'm in a pretty good location. Yeah. That would be helpful as well. Yeah. Um, so I, I have to ask is, working for big squid doing the column is that a paid position or is it like uh i volunteer for this and i get some like sponsorship kind of kickbacks once in a while uh no yeah it's it, it's a paid gig um i get paid by the article mm -hmm. uh, everyone i put out I, I get paid for and then um basically you know if, if there's something out there i'm looking for or i kind of want you know then I kind of just ask them, and then if I get it, I get it. If I don't, then I, I keep asking. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, man. Fair enough. You know, but yeah, it's, um, it, it is paid, but it's, you know, it's it pays for the hobby, basically. Okay. So, so writing for Big Squid is not like your full-time job, like pays all the bills for your house, and you're like living in the lap of luxury in your mansion? No, not yet. <laughs> not yet i'm i'm still holding out for that you know hopefully soon but uh no that's no i i have a regular job still okay so what by chance do you do for your regular job day job i am a garage door service technician so when your motor on your garage door breaks or you run into your door i'm the person that shows up all right that's actually kind of an awesome job if you're like an automotive junkie so like people will have whatever in their garage. I'm guessing you've seen like some pretty cool car guy stuff. And then you've probably seen something crazy too. Cause uh, it, it baffles me, but not everybody stores their car in their garage. They store like random crap in there. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been in the garages where you gotta like, you know, suck in your stomach to get through, you know, cause you know, <laughs> they're a hoarder. 
And uh, I've been to some pretty pristine shops, you know, uh, garages. Um, and yeah, see, seeing crazy stuff just just tends to happen, you know. Yeah. But stuff you wouldn't think about, you know, like the, the door fell on the car, you know, because of a leaf. That's um, crazy. I, I like it, though. It's fun. I, I get to talk to people and, and nothing's ever the same. Um, and my, my bosses there are really cool. And uh, it also... Uh, Anytime I get to see an old RC car in a garage, yeah, like yeah, it boom, spark conversation, you know, and just and just start talking with them. It, it's it's pretty neat. Yeah, that would be cool, and um, I would assume you probably run into that fairly often. I would guess. I mean, there's a lot of them out there. Yeah, yeah, I, I do. I I um, I'd say probably two or three a week. I I I'll go to a house and I'll I'll see an old RC, an old Tamiya Grasshopper. Or, you know, I went to one guy's house and he had boats, boats all over the place, about the size of me. I mean, I'm not the tallest guy in the world, but you know, they're they're pretty big. And yeah. uh, you know, he he was more than excited to talk to me for you know the whole time I was there. That's awesome. I I enjoy that a lot. I think I think it'd be a unique position to be in because um, honestly, it sounds weird, but like garages are interesting because you never know what's in there. So, right. You know, it's like storage wars. Yeah. Like know? storage wars. <laughs> it's a lot like storage wars, actually. Um, so after, let's, let's kind of circle back a little bit here toward the whole, you working for big squid and doing stuff there. What are some perks associated with working for them? And uh, maybe like in the doing the reviewing of crawlers or, or what's going on? Um, yeah, I, I'd say the, you know, per perks are pretty good. Um, one, you know, you're uh, you got more of an audience now. You know, I went from just you know posting my my pictures, you know, in the local crawler group, to now if it if it fits into the scale into the everybody's scaling column, yep, thousands of people see it. Right. You know, um, that that's pretty neat. You know, it's like the ultimate banner contest. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, you know, basically having the hobby paid for, which, you know, my wife is so thrilled about that, <laughs> you know, because I, I was notorious for buying a brand new vehicle and then a week later posting it up on the buy, sell, trade pages, just trading it for something else. You yeah. know, I was, I say every month I get that itch, you know, <laughs> all right, I need something new, you know, and I'll look around if something's sitting for more than a week and I haven't touched it it's it's you know it's up for grabs oh man you'd lose your mind at my house it all sits <laughs> oh yeah yeah um it might it does now i haven't really gotten rid of anything now um which is pretty pretty nice because now i actually have a collection <laughs> yeah right yeah. right but yeah yeah the perks are, the perks are really good and you know i get to go to pretty much any event that we're at i you know i can go to hang out you know beat up on cars and stuff like that cool uh so do you always get to test like the the brand new latest greatest crawler or is it kind of like a testing on availability basis um it's yeah it, i'd say it's testing on availability basis um if they if they send it to us um and it's a crawler then i'd say 95 percent chance it, it, it's going to come to me yeah um, and you know, or if there's something out there and I'm, you know, they haven't, we don't really talk to them much or something. I'll, you know, I'll let, you know, the big guys know like, Hey, I'm interested in this. And then they'll get a hold of them. And, you know, they'll do that aspect, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, like, as for like the bashers and stuff, like, I mean, that's, that's really what big squid is, is known for. Right. <clears throat> is, uh, torturing RC cars. Um, <laughs> I don't, they don't send me those ones, um, which is good, because I I'd probably break them way too fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I think I could successfully break some RC cars. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, that's it's it's funny. Like when you do the review, you know, all right, you finish the review, and then the end game is to see how much torture this thing can take. You know, like when we, you know. Uh, Tim and Cubby and them, 
they went down to uh, a place called the Badlands in Indiana with with Horizon with the uh, Super Baja Lake. Okay. And they were, you know, they did the test run and um, they they put it on top of this thirty foot pylon roof thing and sent it off and kept driving. You know, I mean, it just that that's what we really do is is you know we beat on it to the point where not the average person is going to do it, but right. you're going to know that, hey, man, that's a good vehicle. He just sent it through a wall of fire, and it's still going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, that makes perfect sense to me. So what do you, what would you say is the most difficult part about your job with uh, writing for Big Squid? Um, at, th- there's a few. There's, there's definitely a few. Um, I learned that definitely not to do speculation pieces, uh, especially like, uh, for example, the, the RC four wheel drive desert hero. Yeah. Uh, that Thursday night, you know, cause I, I write all my stuff the night before that Thursday night I wrote up, you know, just a little thing saying, Oh, it, it could be this, it could be that. And I woke up the next morning to RC four wheel drive, just blasting it everywhere saying that, you know, all right, here's what it is, this, this, and this. And I was just, I was way off. <laughs> and I, I got, I, I think I texted Bill Stevens. I was like, dude, what do I do? You know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, he, he talked me off the ledge. And then, uh, and then they sent us the press release. So then they, they let me at least handle that. So it was kind of like a little redemption. Right. But yeah, I learned not to do that again, because it just, it moves so fast. This, this industry moves so fast. Um, you could see one thing the next day and then it's something else Mm -hmm. um there's that and um the beating on the crawlers you know it's you know i i i I do it you know hey that's my job you know but you know when i had to uh when i was reviewing the axial blazer yeah a local park down the street from me there's like a hundred foot ledge and I'm sitting there and looking at it. And I was like, I should just send it off, you know, see what happens. <laughs> and there's a handful of guys looking at me and they're like, I don't know. That's just, if you're going to do that, just give it to me, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And uh, so, yeah, but, you know, I, I try to bash on them the way it would happen in, in, in the woods or on a cop, you know, get it up a decent size hill and, and get it to roll over or something yeah. like that. Yeah, that, 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 I'd say those are the two, uh, the trickiest parts i think for me like bashing go fast trucks would be easy they're they're quick you just want to jump them off of something you know you just want to send it uh right but for crawlers i i can see how that would be harder because you can do that but the reality is most people won't i i like what you said about trying to take it like to the top of a hill and get it to roll so that it would maybe roll down a hill for a ways because Anytime right. that I've really ever had a crawler, like, really be beat on, usually that's what, like, has ensued. I had it somewhere. I didn't catch it at the top of the hill. It ended up at the bottom. Right. right. Or, you know, launching it off into a little creek or something, you know. Yeah. Something, something you might do, you know, when your buddies are all like, do it, do it. And you're like, all right, <laughs> you know. Um, stu- yeah, I, I try to simulate that, like, in 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 the testing part. And then if it's still holding up, and then I, I all usually hand it off to my two-year-old and let him just go nuts because he's just full throttle into everything, you know. And if, it, <laughs> if that holds up, you know, then, you know, they, they made a good car. Well, I could send a resounding uh, positive thing for sawbacks because my son is three, and that's exactly what he does. Bam, right into whatever it is, and then just, like, jams it in there. So, um, yeah. It, I don't know how it's holding up. It doesn't make any sense, but it's doing a great job. Um, all right, let's move on to the next question here. Uh, the next one's pretty awesome. I like the next one a lot. Uh, it's time for a little show and tell. Can you show us something you've been working on, something cool you've got kicking around, uh, something in the shop? Who knows? Yeah. Um, I can uh, – well, there's – I don't – I've been working on this farm truck. Okay. Um, using the uh, the Glenda two long wheelbase chassis. Uh, I can't show you the cab 
because that's just going to give it away, you know. But uh, let's see here. Oh, you got more trucks kicking hey. back there than I could see originally. <laughs> yeah. As of right now, this is the the uh, the bed. Mm-hmm. You know, I've done that. Really haven't done much on that aspect other than, you know, mounting the bed. Use Velcro so it's easy to pop off and it'll also, um, you know, attach to the cap. So then right. everything can pop off and I use magnets in the front to hold it on. You know, it's not going to be a crazy crawler. It's more of a trail rig. Right. Uh, there's that one. And then yeah. it's probably one of my favorites right now is the uh, Marty McFly Toyota. You know, I'm a huge Back to the Future fan. And if anyone's read any of my articles, every now and then I'll snip in like a Back to the Future quote. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I use the uh, 79 Traxxas Bigfoot roll bar for, for the roll bar here because I actually talked to Paul from ProLine. Yeah. And I asked him, I was like, you know, where do I get the bumpers at? Where do I get the, the, the roll bar? And he told me, he's like, oh, our, our fab, fabricator guy, you know, he, he just made them for that picture. And I'm like, oh, you, no, you got me, you know. <laughs> so uh, I, I made that. It's It could be a little bit higher, you know. Um, and then uh, I use a scale fab rear bumper here. And it, mm -hmm. it kind of, it just kind of works, you know. It's not 100% accurate. Yeah. But I like it. It's 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 an SCX ten two Honcho. You know. Yeah. This thing is has been I say three different vehicles already. You know, I'm constantly switching bodies, mm -hmm. you know, and it's stuff like that. And then I'll show one more. <coughs> it's a little muddy. <laughs> but <laughs> the red cat dually that I did, I took a red cat uh Gen seven and turned it into a dually. Yeah. And I actually, I had an event here about a couple weeks ago. Um, and I had it out in the mud. And it's, it's basically two-wheel drive. And it just sat there spinning. But it looked really cool while I was doing it. Right. You know, you know nothing fancy. Uh, the Tamiya King Hauler wheels. Um, that pipe in there, I put the RC four-wheel drive shocks for the trail finder to kind of lower it down. Because mm -hmm. the, the regular shocks for the the red cat are just way too big. And this thing was just, it was really growing out. Yeah. You know, so it was a little bit too big. But I don't know, I had fun with it. And I I had this old New Bright RC car body for, for years. And I, I just, I never threw it away. I was just like, oh, I, I don't know. I'm going to use it for something. I'm going to use it for something. Yeah. And finally, I, I, I was able to use it, you know. Like, I popped out the cab marker lights. Um. I took the uh, fender flares. All right. I made fender flares on it. Yeah, I should have watched this. This is embarrassing now. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? Well, yeah, I mean, it's... I, I could pick out like three different trucks right now that are covered in mud. So, right, you know. But um, yeah, it's it, it's pretty neat, you know. It's just I just wanted to show what you could do with what you might have laying around, and you know, just because it's a red cat doesn't mean it's not a good truck. Oh yeah, you know. so the the club that um, I'm running at the high school, uh, they're, they're right. all Red Cat Gen Sevens, and they're they're great. Like they're they're durable. Uh, we did have some breakage problems, but we figured out why things were breaking, and we took care of that. Um, but man, the kids have been having a blast. So like today, they were out bombing in the snow. We're we're like three or four different outings of not breaking anything, and they're not like. I'm letting them be increasingly not careful with them, if that makes any sense. Like, right. I, I, we had, everything was breaking, and so then I made them all do, like, lined trail runs. So everybody had to be in a line and do, like, a follow the leader thing and um, That's... slow down. And yeah. now they're kind of getting the gist of, like, you can kind of push it, but you can't push it too far or right. you will break it. And so right. they're they're starting to have more fun, and it's awesome. And so that that that's awesome too that i mean that you're you're doing that you know like it's it's I, honestly a part of my school day and so really i got to take toys to work 
and see there you go play with everybody play with play with rc trucks at work um, you're a uh, like i'm getting paid to occupy kids time playing with rc trucks and they're having fun you're so. a professional rc car driver uh i mean if you think about it you're okay you're listen paid. <laughs> so <laughs> you know I, I i try to use that excuse as much as i can now like oh i'm gonna go out running you know and i was like well technically i'm working <laughs> so, you know, it worked for, for the first six times. Yeah. And now she's like, no, you're not. I'm you're stupid. not working, you're playing. Um, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, no. anyway, um, uh, so I'll give you a public shout out right now. Thank you for sending all the big squid stickers. They're going to start popping up on trucks. And awesome. um, uh, to right now, anybody who's watching this or watching it later on YouTube, uh, if you're interested in sending some stickers, I think we're going to do like a sticker wall, sticker board kind of thing and see how many different stickers we can get kind of posted up so that kids can see kind of what the reach is there in social media and that people are paying attention to them. Excuse yeah, I me. think that's, that's, that, that's, that's just awesome, you know. And that's one of the best things about this, uh, this RC in general, man, is the community. Yeah. You know, and, you know, people like you who are, who are – you know, getting the kids involved and, and you know, then in an interview and, you know, crazies like us. <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, so the kid thing is is something I've wanted to do for a really long time, to be honest with you. Uh, it just never fit. It never fit the schedule. I couldn't really make a club that happened after school because a lot of the kids I work with wouldn't be staying after school. Uh, it just, it didn't fit. And I got a chance to like slide it in there and make it fit. And so I, I just ran with it and, and I went big and uh, it's working. And so I'm pretty excited about it, but yeah, um, that's my thing. I, any, anytime I, I'll dive into something, I usually bite off more than I can chew. And then I just, I try to, I, I go big. I just, I don't mean to, you know, like I, I started with a, uh, I had a whole bunch of 164 Hot Wheels. Mm -hmm. You know, and I had a whole lot. I was like, I'll make a scale town. And it ended up being 20 feet long and eight foot wide. Yep. <laughs> you know, and then now like I mean, in my backyard, do. it started off as an oval track. And then my I got a crawler and my buddy came over with a backhoe and we went nuts. <laughs> and, you know, my wife was just like, all right, that's fine. You know, like she's extremely understanding, you know, not most wives would be like, why is there a giant machinery in the backyard ripping holes? You know, yeah, it's for my toy trucks. <laughs> we built a pond so that I would have a place to crawl. So like I have like a, <laughs> I have a stream and a pond and it's got rocks and there you so go. I have like a back a backyard pond. I don't even really have a backyard. It's like ten feet wide, but there's a big pond that takes up the whole thing because it it's my crawling area. So there you go. <laughs> that that'd be nice. I, I'd like to do that, but the park's set so far back from the house that um. It kind of works in my favor though, because it kind of slopes down. So from our bay window in the kitchen, you really, you really couldn't see it at first. Yeah. But now there's more scale buildings. Uh, like one of the guys from the club built me a, a covered bridge. Mm -hmm. um, you see that? So in midsummer, it looks like a mini golf course. Yeah. So you I know. have to ask: Do you have a, do you have a page dedicated to that, or is it kind of like you share it on your personal page and then? Um... I do. I do. Okay. It's, it's called Juice Box Off Road Park. Okay. Um, uh, and yeah, you know, I, I'll post pictures up there. Kind of, you know, if we got an event coming up or something, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll post up, you know, stuff like that. Or, you know, it, it's really for whatever. All right. So people watching, tuning in either here or on YouTube, yeah. go check out Juice Box Off Road Park um, yeah. on Facebook or Instagram. Facebook, Instagram is just, you know, just Jeremy Griffith 72. Okay. You know, yeah, so. that's, you know, that's what I use mostly for uh, like sneak peeks and just any, I think, RC in general. Okay. All right. So check those things out and uh, support Jeremy going on over there. Um, we're going to bump back into some of the questions I have written down. Uh, how many RCs have you built to this point? So like you said, you're been in it like seven years. If you could count back, how many do you think you built? Oh, man. Um, I can hear my little voice screaming upstairs. <laughs> um, I, I'd have to say it ain't it ain't a whole lot. Maybe twelve, thirteen around there. Um, yeah, and there's there's a lot like I wish I held on to. 
but I yeah. didn't like my very first one. I and I've tried to get it back a couple times. Um, actually, uh, Steve Martin uh, that you you had on here, yeah. he's in the Rock Valley guys, and someone in his club around his club got my. I traded it to him, mm-hmm. and, I, and I posted it up there a couple times, like you know, hey, who has this truck? You know, trying to get it back, but I guess the guy who's got it now has dumped a lot of money into it, so I don't think <laughs> I'll ever get it back. But uh, yeah, you know, that's how it goes. But yeah, I, it, I'd say about 12 or so, 12 or 13. Yeah, if you're anything like me, so my first truck that I had was built into like six or seven different renditions, and that I guess the only part I could say for sure that I know was the first truck is the chassis rails, and it's sitting in the truck that's sitting behind me. Um, and I just rebuilt it there too. So, uh, at least you still have a piece of it, you know? Yeah. My, it just gets recycled like over and over again. I don't know. I don't have anything but pictures to look at every, every three months. I'll look at them and just cry a little bit. There you go. (laughs) (laughs) I'll send you some tissues. Uh, which truck would you say that you've built is your favorite of all time? Um, completed right now is is definitely the McFly truck. You know, it's not a it's not a hardcore master builder build, right? You know, but um, I just I just like it. You know, once again, I'm a huge Back to the Future fan, um, and my DeLorean parts aren't here yet. <laughs> um, I've got a DeLorean. It's it's the one tenth scale DeLorean build where they send me parts every month. And then within a year or two, I'll have all the parts. And I'm not going to say how much money, but uh, (laughs) as soon as I get that, I'm going to uh, turn that into an RC. But I'd say, I'd say the McFly truck and then the one I'm working on now. Well, once that's done, that's, that's going to be my baby. Cause I, I put a lot of work. I think I put a lot more work into this farm truck build than I have any other ones. Yeah. Cause I, I tend to rush cause I'm really impatient. Like I'll paint something and I'll sit there for like 15 minutes and be like, okay, it's dry. This one I painted it and I didn't touch it for a week and it was killing me. Yep. So I, I, I'm I, like you on that front for sure. I am like you, like I'll paint something and then I'll like rip the masking off. Like yeah. it'll be like, yeah, it's, <laughs> like the, uh, when, when I posted on, on everybody's scaling about the McFly truck, you know, I, I, I got that picture with the flames, you know, the one yeah. that, you know they use for this. That was that was a frustration picture. Uh, I kept trying to get the little fire streaks behind the tires, and it wasn't working. And I just got frustrated and took the can of gas and just did like a half circle around this truck and lit it in my driveway. And uh, you know, my neighbors are used to that stuff, anyways. <laughs> and uh, it turned out to be a really good picture. So, but yeah, that was. I, I I think I got that all buttoned up and everything within probably three or four days. Yeah. Because I, I wanted to get it done for that week's article. So it was, that was more of a time crunch. Right. Uh, so do you, uh, I know that you're involved in your local RC community and your clubs and all of that. Do you go to competitions? Do you compete in them? Uh, if you do, what is your favorite, like, genre of competition, of get-together, uh, like, any of that stuff? Um, my favorite that is definitely G6. It's it's a long trail run, and it, I, I enjoy it. Um, I do go to comps and, and, and stuff like that, uh, not as much as I'd like to. But I, I don't ever score. Um, I'll pay my fee. Um, two of the guys in our club here. Uh, Greg Holman and Carl Klein, they, they run the, the summer and the winter series. And they, they build some amazing, amazing courses. Uh, their outdoor courses is phenomenal. And their indoor courses is ridiculous. It's just awesome. But uh, I just like running, you know. Yeah. I tried scoring once, and it just, it just I just got frustrated. and but now I'll just, you know, pay the fee, you know, get mine like everyone else and just run my truck. But if it flips over, I just pick it up, you know, <laughs> just keep moving. you know, but yeah, I, I do like, and there's, I think I'm going to try to like comp hardcore at least once coming up, you know, just, just to really try to focus and see, you know, 
because I got into crawling because, you know, racing was just a little, yeah, you know, too, you know, too intense when you're up there, really. Right. And you know, I wasn't relaxed. You know, I'd get down off the driver's stand, and I'd be shaking, you know. You're racing a toy truck, you know, but, you know, it's it's different. You know, crawling, you know, my chubby chubby belly out walking through the woods and you know, I, I, I like I like nature too so it's it's the best of both worlds you know like you got this amazing playground you know called the world mm -hmm. you know get out there and enjoy it right uh so we're gonna move on to our next question but I want to pose the question I just asked you to the people out there watching uh, if you do actually compete or attend events what is your favorite style of event to attend and why do you choose those ones? So over the course of the year, with all of the interviews, talking to all of the different people, I'm very curious to see what people have to say. One of the reasons I like the hobby so much is because of the variety and the vastness that's out there, so that there really is something for everyone. And it, it always makes me curious to see like what is more popular, what's gaining more traction. Um, and I know where my thoughts lie with what's going on there, but I don't know that that always is actually in tune with what is going on. So it's, I'm curious. Um, and especially if you're picking this up over on YouTube, um, again, comment up and uh, like and subscribe. That would be super cool, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, number 18 here. I don't ever say what number they are. I don't know what I'm doing. Sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, what is one thing you never leave off of a scale build? So if you, every time you build a scale truck, like it's always going to have this one thing. What is that? Um, it's, it's probably the most silly, uh, silly one yet. Cause I've listened to all the other guys, you know? Yeah. And, uh, mine's stickers, man. I, I, I gotta have those scale stickers in the back window. Um, I just, my, my, my real one, one rigs, you know, have, stickers all over the back windows you know yeah i just they they just make it you know i don't know yeah stickers definitely and i had a buddy uh in in the local crawler club made me a whole bunch of uh scale corn stickers because you know i'm a big corn fan and uh i was like he's like yeah i can make them you know and uh, he came to one of the events and handed me this sheet and i'm like oh man that's awesome so now <laughs> all my all the rigs i think you see back there have one on it except the mcfly truck the mcfly i'm just trying to you know if i can find a huey lewis in the new sticker i might slap it on the back of it <laughs> but That'd yeah definitely stickers man so, i've got probably i don't know a couple thousand stickers you know just yeah. laying around so i i love stickers but i always have a hard time peeling them off and putting them on something I like I'll like hold on to stickers and end up with a stack of them and I won't put them on anything because I can never find what to do. Um, but I did specifically buy a sticker. Uh, so I bought a whole sticker pack for one sticker. And so it was um, when Josh from Extreme Scale Performance sold the sticker pack. Mm -hmm. uh, the tri van was on Scale Wars and I had to have the little tiny Scale Wars badge. So I bought the whole sticker pack just so I could put the Scale Wars badge in the back window of the oh, yeah. Uh, I've done that countless times. You buy a whole, whole lot of stickers just for that one, yeah. you know, because that that that's what's gonna make it, or you know, that's what you want, you know. And I've done that with scale items too, you know. I go into like Walmart or, you know, when Toys R Us was around, <laughs> um, I'd go there and I'd I'd spend thirty forty dollars on a toy for just this little scale item, and then at least now I can be like, well, it's for my son, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, he can use all of that other stuff that's in there. Yeah, yeah. I just I just want the little tablet. That's all. <laughs> you know? uh, what areas of RC are you following most? So with Big Squid, you kind of have to have your sights out there a little bit wider than, than some of us. We can be very narrow. But what area are you following the most? Um, I, I'm predicting that I have an idea of where that's going. So if, if I'm right, I have a follow-up question. Right. Um, well, obviously for me, it's it's the crawlers and the and the scale, but I also do follow you know, you know obviously the bashers and 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 the race cars. Um, I I really like the uh, oval mods. Okay. Like their oval mods, I I love them. Um, <laughs> and uh, and the fact that they're starting to get some some attention now, like you're seeing um, 
they, they they're basically like the outlaw sprint cars. Yeah. I mean, you're seeing companies come out with those just ready to go before people are just, you know, taking buggies and then just kind of customizing them. Uh, so I like the fact that that's getting getting some uh, some traction there. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously it's 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 the crawlers and the scale scale side of things. Okay, so then my follow up question is like, what part of that are you following? Are you following like the Uber scale scratch built people? Or are you following like more of the general audience or are you like what specifically like niche part of crawling? Are you like sites set on it, locked in every time it goes up on Instagram or Facebook, like the, you just got to have more. Oh man. It's, it's kind of everything. <laughs> um, I, I'd say more like the, the scale side of it. The um, you know, like the scale garages, um, like after this interview is done, I'm tearing this thing down <laughs> and, and I'm restart, I'm, I'm rebuilding it. Cause I've had this for, I'd say four, four years, basically once I got a crawler, I was like, Oh, I need a garage. Right. Um, and it's time for something new and it's, it's, it's going to be pretty big, but yeah, the, the scale garages, um, the scratch builds are amazing. But what people can do with, um, uh, you know, styrene. Mm -hmm. just, just blows my mind. Um, I, I couldn't do it. I'm not gonna, you know. I'm definitely. I, I've, I've just started kind of messing with styrene a little bit. Um, but seeing how people just, just go crazy with that stuff, I, I, I don't, I don't get it, but I love it. Yeah. You know? So yeah, the scratch builds and and even just, you know, the, the dude who just picked it up a week ago and then you know he's adding some scale stuff to it just. You know, I like that too, just, you know, because, hey, that, that's a new guy. And who knows, in a week or a month down the road, you know, he could be the next Johnny Burton. Right, right. <laughs> I'm sure he's going to love that shout out. Um, I know, I know, right? <laughs> so, uh, speaking of names, who are some of your influence inside of the scale crawling segment here that we have going on? And if you're going to pick someone to have on the show that I may have not already had on the show, who would you be picking and why? Um, well, like I said, you know, like I like, I like Johnny Burton stuff. Uh, his weathering is, is pretty sweet. And he's been doing basically makeup tutorials lately. Where, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm digging him, you know, and, and he's, he's, he's fun to watch. He's fun to watch. I just, I love hearing him talk. Um, uh, there's another guy I, I kind of keep an eye on. His name is David Steel Fox. I, I think I said his name right. I hope I did. If I didn't, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Um, he does some pretty, pretty sick builds. Um, there's another guy up north from me, um, Jamie Fisker Rush. Once again, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. But he's got an off-road park kind of like, like me, um, and he does some really good builds. Uh, another local guy, Greg Holman. Uh, <clears throat> he's got this wicked six by six flatbed that, uh, when I finished the, uh, the McFly truck, I was like, bring that over. We got to get a picture. And it just, it worked perfectly. And, and it actually raises up and slopes down. Um, I, I'd say, yeah, 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 I'd say those guys are pretty good. Awesome. Uh, I'll definitely look into all that and, uh, let's see who says yes. <laughs> right. I, I don't think anyone would say no, you know. And then, you know, Headquake, too. I don't know. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. I'm sure you have. Oh, yeah. The um, problem is, and I maybe you know, I don't know. Maybe someone in this feed knows. Um, the only way I would know to get a hold of him would maybe be on the forums. And so uh, the, the other thing is if he's on Facebook and you guys know that and you know his name on Facebook – if anybody would just PM me that, that'd be amazing. He's, he's I could like, get a hold of him. He's like elusive. He's like the mystery man, you know. Yeah. He's, he's like the the mayor and Doug. You never see him. Um, you know, you'll you watch his videos. You'll see his cat. Like I could pick his cat out from anybody. Um, <laughs> but you'll see his hands. But it's just just the fact that he makes those those amazing builds out of wood. Mm -hmm. um, the Ram Charger he did. Um, just I I would remortgage my house for that thing <laughs> i can hear my wife stomping on the floor like no you're not she's gonna come down and turn your <laughs> wi-fi off um, right 
<laughs> but no, it's just, dude, yeah, he's, and like, he's probably one of the reasons I, I wanted to get into the, the scale off road park. Cause he's got this perfect terrain. Yeah. And I just, I loved it. And you know, so he, he's, he's probably a good influence on me. I'd say. Yeah. He was a huge influence for me. Uh, that's, I mean, I started building stuff out of wood after seeing him do it because I was like, well, if you can build it out of wood and I have it laying around, then I'm going to try. And right. so I like, I built like a wood flatbed and then I did a cab and the first ones were pretty horrendous, but kind of looked like a truck. And then the tri van's all made out of wood. So um, I like that tri van. That, the color scheme just is <laughs> perfect. Like if you could find a, uh, a scale Urkel, <laughs> you know, I, I think it'd be perfect for it. You know, that's, that, that, that's an awesome build though. Cause it's a unique thing. Yeah. I, I've never seen any of the, anything else like that out there. Well, it was modeled strictly after a one-to-one -one truck. So like, right. there's a photo out there online. And if you search roustabout tri van, it pops up and it's red and it has a white roof. And like, right. I, it looks just like the one I built. Uh, they only made like less than 200 of them ever. And so, like, you'll never see one in person unless you happen to go to, like, there's, there's like, a museum that's, like, six hours from me. And this guy has, like, three of them. If you go there, you might see one. I saw, like, okay. two for sale over the course of since I've built it. Um, like, But, you know, it's, 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 it's nice and unique, you know. It's not, I'm not knocking Jeep or anything, but <laughs> you, you see a lot of Jeeps. Yeah, I have you some. Know, you, you see a lot of Jeeps, a lot of Fords, you know. You don't really see, you know, a lot of off the wall stuff. Yep, that's because guys are emulating what they want in real life, and yeah, and yeah. so like, like I wish I had all this in 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 one to one, you know, like that'd be yeah. pretty sweet. Absolutely, even, even the Millennium Falcon, you know. <laughs> Sorry, I have to respond to a comment because it's hilarious. No, my beanie is not to prevent head glare. My beanie is because it's cold in my basement. <laughs> So. My hat is to provide uh, prevent head glare, so. Yeah, well, I mean, I get it, too. I just don't care anymore. Like, it's okay. Head glare's fine. It's what right, bald people right. get. Own it. You know, work <laughs> it, you know. It's all right. I'm going bald, and I know it. I've been going bald for a long time. All right. So where do you see uh, the scale crawling community heading in the future? Uh, it's It's just... If it just keeps rolling the way it is, it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, you know, like you've asked a lot of guys, what do you like most about the hobby? And, and you usually get the same answer, you know, the community. And and honestly, it is, you know, like the, you know, the first time, you know, I, I got a crawler and, you know, uh, I mentioned it before, Greg Holman, I was doing a trade with him and he's like, oh, check out this page, you know, and I was like, oh, okay. Never did. Did another trade with him again. He's like, check it out. I did. And then uh, they were doing a group crawl, you know, somewhere. And I was like, I'll check it out. I told my wife, I was like, all right, I'm going to go, you know, play in the woods with some guys I met on the internet. And she was like, uh, she's like, all right. Whistle. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, I went out, you know, I didn't know any of them. And within an hour, you know, like, it's just, just the camaraderie, you know, of guys. And now, now they're, they're some of my close friends. Um, you know, the community is amazing. They're like I hold a turkey crawl here just for the club. They bring all their family. Yeah. Um, you know, everyone brings a dish and it's probably the best party we have here because one, my wife's thrilled. She doesn't have to cook a whole lot and it's cleaned up. Everyone cleans up at the end. Like we don't really have to do anything. Yeah. That's you awesome. Know? And yeah, it's, I, I see, I see it getting bigger and bigger and, you know, you see more companies now dipping into the scale scale side of it like team associated yep you know so i i i, I think it's just gonna keep getting bigger man awesome i hope <laughs> so i skipped a question that's really important to me um and it's really important because it's it it's a difficult one and I like it because it shines light on other people. And so okay. what is your favorite build out there that's kicking around the internet that is not your own? Like if you had to pick one, what is the one that you're like, that one, that's the one? Um, and I, 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 can I say two? 
I guess. <laughs> you guess? <laughs> okay. Um, obviously, he Headquakes Ram Charger um, is definitely one. And then, you know, it's, it's Bill Stevens' Toy Story truck. He, he built the, uh, the Pizza Planet truck. Yeah, and that was actually one of the first rigs I seen out with with him in the outing, and I was just in awe. Of, like, I didn't know that could be done, you know. And I mean, he's even got the scale, you know, Buzz and Woody and the little alien in the back. Yep. And uh, yeah, I, I'd say those two trucks are, are my absolutely favorite. But there's, I feel bad even just naming those because there's so many beautiful trucks that just keep popping up every day, you yeah. know. Um, it's funny, like when my wife's like, "Oh, did you see what so and so posted on Facebook?" I, I don't see anything on my Facebook, but our C cars, our C cars, our C cars, and I like it that way. Yep. Um, uh, so, I didn't even know there was an election going on. Yeah, it's, it's hilarious <laughs> that you just said that because uh, we have that conversation daily in my household, and so it'll be like a relative of mine or someone that's a joint friend between my wife and I, and she'll be like, "Did you see that this person posted this?" And I'm like, right. all I saw is RC trucks all day. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's all that pops up on my feed, and it's amazing. I bet no, all I, of yeah. your feeds are like that. If your feed is like that, comment with a thumbs up. Not like over yeah. on like the the emoji thing, but right. like comment with a thumbs up. If all you get is face um, on Facebook is RC cars, because I'm betting. Right. It's like, oh, Tiffany, you know, Tiffany's pregnant. That that's nice. I want a skill con uh, banner contest though. So <laughs> yeah. that's. Right. That's always fun. Um, so what is your best piece of advice? Like you've got like local stuff going on. You've got a course in your backyard. You've got people coming out, uh, hanging out, you're hosting events. What advice do you give to people who just started out, who like just picked up their first ready to run, they plug their battery in, they show up, they're all gung ho. They're like, what do I do to my truck? What do, what do you tell them? Um, the most I say is don't don't start upgrading it until it breaks. You know, like I, I've seen guys buy brand new rigs, not even really being into it. And then before they're, you know, they're at the counter and they're already swapped, you know, they already got the upgraded shots, upgraded servos, stuff like that. Get the run out of it. Get, you know, see what the company that you're buying provided you. Mm -hmm. um, you'd be surprised that it's usually, it's usually pretty good. Um, and don't get intimidated, you know, uh, just cause so-and-so's got these awesome builds, you know, ask them a question, you know, don't, don't be, don't be scared. Cause they're, we're all, we're all, uh, show offs. So we're more <laughs> than happy to tell you how we did it and, and it's backstory and, and everything like that. Um, you know, yeah, I, I say that and, and don't use regular art regular spray paint when you're painting your first body <laughs> everyone's gone it i at least i have um buy the rc paint it'll save you a ton of headache <laughs> that's that's like a great piece of advice i love it um <laughs> no one told me <laughs> uh, only if it's lexan though you can paint other hard bodies without the rc yeah paint. you can you know if it's a hard <laughs> body yeah you can do it but don't no don't don't do it on the lexan and i got tricked too like Maybe a couple months ago, uh, I, I bought the Tamiya paint, you know, and I was like, oh, sweet. I sprayed it, looked great, took it out. And I was like, why is it chipping? And then I looked at the paint and it said four plastic. And I was like, no. So it still happens. You know, I just got to read that label. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so one of the things that I like that you put in there is kind of like that whole, um, don't be quick to upgrade and kind of check it out and run what you've got going on. Uh, uh, the other thing that I really like that you put in there, like more than any of that is that all of the guys out there that you see that are making cool stuff and who are like going way over and above on their, on their trucks. And like, you see their stuff pop up all over the place. The reason you see their stuff pop up all over the place is because they're, they're super involved in the community and they want to be helpful. And so right. they're posting those things for one to show off because we're all show offs, like all mm -hmm. of us. Um, 
And two, they're doing it because they want to help everybody and they want to show you what they're doing. They want to walk you through the steps and asking them questions and asking for help is awesome. And, yeah, you know, and don't be afraid to build something that looks like garbage because we've all oh, done yeah. it. I, oh, oh yeah. my gosh. If I could show you pictures, I need to like source back and look at some of this stuff. I don't know what I was thinking. It looked good then. Hey, you know, I'll still build or do something that's just not, it's off the wall, but, and you, even, hey, you know, if, if you like it, then that that's all that matters. It's, it's your car. I've never understood the whole thing, like, because you'll, you'll go out, <coughs> excuse me, and, um, you know, so like, oh, it's a Ford, or oh, it's a Dodge. I'm like, no, it's an Axial, or uh, it's an RC four-wheel drive. It's, it's just a little plastic body on it. That doesn't, you know, but, um, and it don't, don't. It don't matter, you know. Just have fun with it. Yeah, you know, you'd be surprised what you can do, um, just just by putting your mind to it and you know using everyday house things. You'd be you'd be shocked what you could use. A hundred percent agree with that statement. Absolutely. Uh, so my next question I ask of a lot of people, um, I, I always throw something in here about sponsorship, and I I do it for a reason. Um, there is, there is an agenda behind that and it's to kind of spread the word about kind of what sponsorship is, how it works, uh, to n let people know that not everybody is sponsored and people who are sponsored, like how it kind of came about and so on and so forth. And so do you currently have any sponsors? And if so, why have you chosen to represent those people? Uh, no, I, I don't have any sponsors. I, I've never been sponsored. And, and, and that is another thing too, when you, when you first get into the hobby and, you know, you really get into it, you know, you, you see, you know, like you go to the racetrack, you're like, oh, that guy's sponsored, you know, oh, well, you know, you want to be sponsored. Um, I, I wanted to be, you know, I just thought, you know, I didn't know what it all entailed. You know, I just thought being, being sponsored by somebody was here, race this and we're going to give it to you for free. Um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm not sponsored. Uh, I think I have it a little easier than the sponsored guys. Yeah. Because uh, one, they you've got to be out all the time, out out there racing. I I I can't be out all the time. You know, luckily I'm able to do what I what I can do. You know, either from my house or, or locally, and 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 still achieve. Uh, but yeah. It, yeah, not, not sponsored. Just just work for the squid, you know. Yeah, which I I I, lo I love doing so. That's awesome, man. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe in a way, it's kind of like a sponsor. I, I don't know. But, I mean, you. So I mean, okay. So yes, I would say kind of in a way, it's sponsored. Like 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 a sponsor. I mean, you right. are employed by them, but additionally, you do you do get some cool perks. Um, yeah, you get some cool some cool kickbacks from some stuff, and and that's that's cool, and so. I mean, that's more or less what a lot of RC sponsorship is anyway. It's yeah. it's cool perks, cool kickbacks, um, but nothing's free. You have to no. do stuff in return. Um, no, yeah. And, no. and, you should, and you, more than likely, you're probably already doing those things before you enter into a sponsorship relationship with anybody anyway. Right. So. Right, yeah. Yeah, nothing is, like we, like we said last night, you know, yeah. you know. Oh, it's awesome. He gets free RC cars. No, they're not free if you... You have to work for them. Yeah. You know, like I don't get stuff sent to me and just like, here you go, play with that. And then that's it. See ya. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of work go goes into it. There's nights where I'm up till two, three in the morning writing an article or, or finishing up a review and then have to be up for work at seven for my regular job. Yep. You know, but I have to get this out on a deadline. Um, so, yeah, it's yeah, I, it's it's a fun job, but it's it's still work. You know, you just still have to earn that, earn that toy money, you know? Completely understandable. And a lot of the guys, a, a lot of people in this RC hobby are doing that. They're putting right. in crazy hours after families go to bed because that's the time that's available. And yep. people, I mean, we're all actually just old dudes who are exhausted because we stay up all night playing with tiny trucks. Right. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to finish uh, that bumper, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh what should we expect to see next from you? 
Um, I, I'd say, you know, obviously the farm truck. That's maybe I'm overhyping this thing, and and I'm gonna when I finally reveal it, it's gonna be like, oh, that's a nice truck. <laughs> but to me, like that's this is my most in depth uh, build, and and using the RC four wheel drive chassis is just it's just so scale. Yeah. Um, obviously that more, you know, obviously the weekly basis of, uh, you know, big squid, um, everybody's scaling. Our podcast is, 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 is kicking off. Like we just put out the, the one with the red cat guys. Okay. Uh, the guys from red cat, which are awesome. And we might start doing, uh, some in-house stuff too. Um, little, little podcasts and stuff like that. But yeah, just, just a whole lot of, uh, Scaleless goodness or stuff. Scaleless goodness or stuff coming from uh, <laughs> Jeremy. Let's, right let's... From, from, yeah, from a rider, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank God for spell check, right? Absolutely. Thank God. Um, all right, man. Is there anything I missed? Anything that you feel you need to get out there before I let you go and kind of close this up? Uh, no, man, I think, I think you hit it pretty good. Like, you know, like, like I said, you know, if, if, if you haven't heard of Big Squid RC, you know, go to the website, check it out. If, if you're on the fence about buying a vehicle, chances are we've had it, we've reviewed it, and we've brought it to hell and back. Um, you know, check it out, read, read up on it, you know. Um, we've got all sorts of stuff. Every bit of part of RC that you want, we cover some aspect of it. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, you know, my my Instagram page, Jeremy Griffith 72 uh, you check that out, or even on Facebook, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like a Facebook stalker. I'm, I'm on all the pages. I might not post a lot. I might hit a like button every now and then, but, I'm, but I am out there, you know, I'm, I'm walking in the shadows. <laughs> awesome, man. Um, so, uh, I guess all I want to do is say thank you for being on. I enjoyed the conversation. I think the people watching enjoyed the conversation. And anybody picking it up over on YouTube later is going to definitely enjoy the conversation. Um, uh, so thank you. Oh, thank you, man. You know, like like I said last night, you're, you're becoming the uh, Johnny Carson of RC, you know. And, uh, I, and I, I ordered some sweet scale license plates from this company called Van Orb Customs. Uh, I'm kind of waiting for those. Oh, yeah, you got them. Both. They're in this bag and they're supposed to right? go out maybe tomorrow. I mean, it is 11 o'clock and I still have to upload this to YouTube and be at right. work tomorrow morning. So, more no, than likely, I, I they'll understand. get shipped Monday. <laughs> no, no, it's it's good. You know, I think you and RC Four Wheel Drive were the only two companies I bought from on Black Friday. <laughs> that was it you know <laughs> i was like i want these skin plates you know and then i uh but no that's that's that and your backdrop i'm gonna probably end up picking one of your backdrops up that's pretty neat awesome man um that'd be great i'd appreciate it for sure uh right i like it because i don't have to have a massive scale garage but like i can if i want to like close it down and roll it right. up and stick it in the corner i can do that if I want to have it set up, I can have it set up. Um, which is which is key, you know. Like I think that's what I'm gonna do because this one's kind of massive, you know. It, it wraps around and then to the scale metal Metallica stage next to me on the left. Um, I'm gonna, you know, have one good size one and then make a couple foam ones, you know, uh, foam build them. So I, you know, it almost looked like a movie set with like three different types of garages you know yeah get every aspect because not everybody's one one garage looks like that with a bed pack lift or anything you know i want you know the average joe you know just wrenching on his truck type type garage my garage with a bunch yeah. of stuff all over it yep you know? which is a hard one so like i looked at doing various different ones with backdrop stuff and that's a hard one because the wide angle that you would need to get that like you'd have to have such a wide angle lens to pull that off that I just don't have it. So, um, and and you don't find shots like that on the internet because no one's posting like high res images of their garage with a bunch of crap on the wall. Right. No one's right. doing that. Not yet. Not yet. You know. <laughs> so, but yeah. So it's, it's all good, man. I appreciate you ha having me on, though, man. That's that's pretty awesome. 
yeah, thank you for being on. I enjoyed it. Thank you for the stickers for the RC Club. I genuinely appreciate that. The kids love them. Um, they're awesome. going to go on some stuff. But like I said, every free moment we've had right now, because the weather's been reasonable and the snow's not too deep, we've been outside running trucks. So it's, yeah. we'll slow down. Well, yeah, if, if they got the big squid stickers, you're going to start seeing some of those airborne. Because they're going to see what the <laughs> other guys in, the, in Big Squid do. You know, they're going to see what Tim and Cubby do. And they're going to be like, yeah, let's set it off the roof. Uh, like, no. <laughs> so I, is big squid picking up the bill there or no? <laughs> uh, sure we'll write you a check oh, okay uh-huh <laughs> so all right man thanks for being on i appreciate it uh i will i will definitely be talking to you in the future uh um, and don't be a stranger as well so right on brother you have a good night man all right you too so i'm gonna let you go and finish out the show all right later wait maybe yep there we go there we go all right, guys, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for carrying on to the end. I appreciate each and every one of you. You guys tune in. Uh, a lot of names are tuning in on a weekly basis. It's amazing. I cannot believe the support. It's overwhelming at times, and thank you.